and he talks about his winnowing fork being in his hand. Anybody know what a winnowing fork is? You guys know what that is? That's what I always picture is like the, one of those that, you know, for chopping. The the winnowing fork is for the, the wheat and the chaff. And what it was is it, if you kind of picture like a pig's fork, but the, the thongs are a lot closer together and not so heavy, you know, it's much lighter. And what they do is they pick up the, the wheat and they throw it up in the air on the fork. And as it would go up and fall back down on it, that would bang the chaff off of it. And then, you know, if you had a nice breeze, that would help. And the chaff would just kind of blow away. Uh, or one of the images that we'll see in, in the scripture is where they'll gather up that chaff and throw it into a fire. Uh, and that's the way the, the kingdom of God is presented here by John. Jesus is gonna come and he is gonna do some shaking for one. And he's going to separate the wheat from the chaff. And he's going to bring the wheat into his barn. And the chaff is going to get burned up with an unquenchable fire. And this is individuals. This is, are you going to follow Jesus or are you not? Uh, if you are a follower of Jesus, if you are committed and you're going to be part of the kingdom, then you're the wheat that's going to be brought in. Uh, that's where Jesus was able to, at the end of his life, saying, you know, those that you gave me, Father, I didn't lose. There were many that followed him along the way. There were many that claimed that he was Lord. And uh, there was one time there were thousands of people and they tried to force him to be king and, uh, and things like this. And uh, all kinds of people. But he knew their hearts. And when it really came down to it, they didn't want to be part of the kingdom of heaven. They wanted to have their own idea, their own kingdom. They wanted to have a king they could control. Uh, they wanted someone that would feed them physically and just take care of them. And, and they wouldn't have to do anything. And just uh, all their own ideas. That was all the chaff along the way. But then there were those, like the 12, and there, there were others, that, that were committed to him and going to follow him and, and going to persevere to the end. And we need to be of those ones that are going to persevere to the end, that are going to uh, stay true to him, uh, because otherwise we just blow away by the wayside. I don't, I don't want to blow away by the wayside. He's done too much for me. He's got too much invested. I might as well give him something back. Yeah. Might as well be productive and 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 bring forth that fruit. And and as we as we think about the, the kingdom of God and and some of the things that, that Jesus said about the kingdom of God, um, I think about the, the there was one time in in his life where he was sharing with them. You know, if you exalt yourself, you're going to be humbled. If you humble yourself, you'll be exalted. And at that time these people came probably mostly the ladies <laughs> with their children their little infants their babies and they wanted jesus to touch them just touch them um, they weren't asking for some blessing or anything special they just wanted jesus to touch them um, and it makes sense i mean <laughs> we saw someone with the anointing of jesus we, uh, why not bring our children to him uh, that's great as a parent and the disciples start rebuking him and saying, ah, oh, don't, don't be bothering the master with these little kids, you know, why are you bothering him? He's got, he's got more important things to do. Here he is showing us the kingdom of heaven. Here he is healing these people. He's casting out demons. He's raising the dead. Why are you bothering him with children? And Jesus rebukes him. And he says, listen, you suffer those little children to come unto me because such is the kingdom of heaven. As a matter of fact, let me put it this way. If you don't accept the kingdom of heaven like a little child, then you're not worthy of the kingdom of heaven. And he's like, whoa, you know. The kingdom of heaven is something that we come as babies. We come as infants. I, th I think of Jesus when he talks to, to Nicodemus and he says, unless you're born again, you're not going to partake in the kingdom of heaven. And, and it's that new life that begins. It's that repentance, again, from, from who we were, where, uh, what we think. Uh, I, as I think about the, the kingdom of heaven and one of the, the things that uh, really are paramount in the kingdom of heaven, it's our thought process, you know. Uh, we're changing what we're going to do, yes. But the reason we're changing what we're going to do is because of how we think. 
before, you know, the tax collectors thought it's it's okay to take a little extra. The soldiers thought, hey, you know, I got this power, I might as well use it. I can extort money. Uh, you know, the people that had extra thought, why should I bother with the people in need? But now in the kingdom of heaven, I'm going to think differently. I'm going to start putting other people first. I'm going to start having a concern for others because of my love for God. It's going to affect the way I interact with others. And it has a lot to do with our thoughts. It has a lot to do with just the way we see the world and the way we interact. The kingdom of heaven is going to change the way we see things. And as it changes the way we see things and the way we think, that's what's going to change our actions. Some people will change their actions without changing their heart. And that's not what it's about. 